After winning 10 of 11 games, our Vegas Golden Knights have now lost five games in a row. Now, I know some of you Vegas Golden Knights fans are ready to hit the panic button. The start of the playoffs is just a few weeks away. Is it time to sound the alarm? Is it time to panic? Or is the team being smart with their assets and making sure the team is fresh and healthy on the quest for the Stanley Cup? Is that the plan? I think that's the plan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 37 of... Welcome to Knights Nation, an unofficial podcast discussing all things Vegas Golden Knights. A show designed for the fans by a fan. Produced locally in Las Vegas, Nevada. Home of the Fortress. Weekly episodes include segments Numbers Don't Lie, VGK Rewind, and What the Puck. And now, here's your host, the VGK Bug Eye Guy. What's going on, Vegas? Golden Knights fans. Nick, the VGK Bug Eye Guy is back. And yes, welcome to episode 37 of Knights Nation podcast. We're going to start off the episode announcing the winner. For you guys that are fans of the Knights Nation podcast, last week I had a contest and the winner was going to receive one of my brand new Knights Nation podcast hats. Well, I'm here to announce now, and I've already sent an email to the winner, Congratulations to Gabriel Wepner. Gabriel Wepner, I've reached out to you via email. I need you to send me an address where I can mail you a hat. I'll throw a couple stickers in the box, and congratulations on winning. For everyone else that entered, I'm sorry you didn't win. So why not do another contest right now? Same rules apply as last week. All you got to do is send me an email. Let me know where you're subscribed to the podcast. And you also have to use the magic word. In the description in the email, you have to use the word garbage goals. Yep, this week the, the secret word is garbage goals because unfortunately our Vegas Golden Knights let in some garbage goals this week. So send me an email, vgkbugeyeguy at gmail.com. In the title, say contest number three. Down in the description, you got to do two things. You got to let me know where you're subscribed to the podcast and you got to have the word garbage goals in there. Now, this contest will run from now until after the Kings game next Saturday, the final game of the season. Once the regular season is officially done after that Kings game, that's when the contest will close. I'll run it through the random generator. It'll select a name, and I'll reach out. And this week, you're going to win a couple Knights Nation stickers and a custom Knights Nation beanie. That's what the contest three, that's what you're going to win. So send me an email, vgkbugeyeguy at gmail.com. Let me know where you subscribe to the podcast and... You guys already know this by now, but Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, YouTube, my website, KnightsNation.Vegas, www.KnightsNation.Vegas. Hey, check it out and enjoy. All right, so that wraps up the giveaway section. Um, What do we got on the show today? Well, let's see. We're going to do some uh, VGK news. We're going to do some banged up Golden Knights, some random news from around the league where we're mostly going to talk about the playoffs. We're going to do VGK Rewind. Now, I do VGK Rewind. That's kind of the whole premise of the show is to recap and review last week's games. I'm I'm telling you right now, and I've warned you guys in past episodes, when we lose and lose and lose, sometimes they're painful. My plan on this episode is to kind of fly through it relatively quickly only because I don't need to bring up painful memories from a week ago just for you guys to listen and go, Boy, I remember that play. That play was garbage, or that penalty was garbage, or blah, blah, blah. I get it. I understand. I'm in the same boat as you. Remember, this is a show by a fan for a fan. So I know what you want to hear, and I know you don't want to hear an awful lot of information about us losing, especially the way we lost some of those games. But we are going to do VGK Rewind. We're going to talk about the Blues, the Avalanche, the Minnesota Wild, and the stupid San Jose Sharks. And then what's on tap? So the last few episodes, what's on tap has been kind of a a quick synopsis of the team that's coming in that we're going to be playing. Now, next week, the final week of the regular season, we've got three opponents that we're going to be facing that have all been eliminated from the playoffs. So since they're out of the playoffs, I don't really care who we're playing. So we will talk briefly about our opponents, but I'm not going to go in-depth that much this week. Numbers don't lie. Yes, we'll absolutely hit numbers don't lie. Kind of see where the Vegas Golden Knights sit in the NHL standings as far as power plays and stuff. And then we'll talk about some of the player stats. 
Hits. Hits is always an important one that I talk about, and especially since Carrier's back and has been laying the smack down on the ice. Between him and Revo, I, I think after the next three games, they can get back up to one and two. The math's close, and we'll talk about that, and numbers don't lie. Good, bad, and ugly. I'm not going to do a good, bad, and ugly this week because when you lose all those games, there's not really much good. I mean, there is some good, but it's not worth me talking about. And the bad and ugly would just be really negative, so I've decided to leave that out. Uh, same with funny shit fans say. Honestly, um, there's been a lot of negativity out there because we're losing. I get it. I understand. I'm not going to continue. I'm not going to waste time on my podcast continuing to ramble on and on about negativity. I'm trying to be the man of positivity. It's very hard sometimes, and I've just decided this week, no good, bad, and ugly, and no funny shit fan say. It's just not going to happen. And then finally, what the puck. So my what the puck this week is I did a live stream. After the Sharks game yesterday, I did a live stream on YouTube with my buddy Louie who runs VGK coverage. He does a bunch of videos pretty much after every single game. He's super committed to it. He, he's funny. We're, we're, we're friends. We, we met through the Vegas Golden Knights uh, yesterday. Honestly, I was like, maybe I should have a couple people over and we can just watch the Sharks game. We ended up busting out our inflatable big screen in the backyard, set it up, had a little fire, had some friends and family over. We enjoyed the game. We watched it outside in Las Vegas in March. I had the kids in the pool. Yes, we were actually swimming in the pool in March. I did have to use the heater, but still. People still have snow where they're at, and we're swimming in the pool in Las Vegas. So we enjoyed that. We had a good time. Well, after that Sharks game, when everybody left, Louis stuck around. He came upstairs. I kind of showed him where I record the podcast and everything, and we decided to do a live stream. Now, initially, I thought the live stream was going to be like 20 minutes. It's probably partially my fault because I like to ramble and him too. But we ended up doing like two hours. So if you guys are interested, go over to YouTube. After you listen to this podcast, of course, go over to YouTube. And check out VGK coverage. He has a bunch of videos, and his most recent one is going to be, yes, you guessed it, it's going to be a live stream with me, the VGK Bug Eye Guy. And we talk about all kinds of stuff. Now, the cool thing about the live stream was people were commenting as we were doing it. And that's something I'm not into. I don't normally do videos anymore. It just takes too much time and effort. And I'm not really a, I don't really, like, Louie, he interacts with other YouTubers because that's just, that's kind of how you have to do it there. For me, when I decided to get away from videos, I, I pretty much am kind of a post whore. You know, I will post something maybe on a game day, one or two posts, and then kind of be done. Uh, and then at the end of the week, or Mondays really, I'll kind of blast out to everywhere on social media, hey, I got a new podcast where I've kind of taken notes throughout the week and then got them all together, come up with the script, come up with the game plan, get all my paperwork ready, and then record this podcast like I am right now. Well, this live stream was cool because people were watching us live, which I get it. That's what a live stream is. And then they were commenting, and we were, like, talking, rambling, and then a comment would kind of pin us to another topic to start talking about. I really enjoyed it. We got a lot of positive feedback. We definitely will do one again in the future. I wish he lived closer to me. He's on the other side of town, but kudos for him coming over, hanging out. Uh, we did the live stream, and we had some we we had fun. That was the best part about it was we had fun. We were just kind of spitballing ideas back and forth, both as both as Golden Knights fans, and it worked out really well. So, to get back to what the puck this week's what the puck, I've decided to take about ten or fifteen minutes of our conversation. Now I've edited certain parts out because you don't need to, if you want to listen to the whole thing. Cool, go to YouTube VGK coverage, go check it out. But I, I pulled out some discussions we were talking about Evander Kane, the Sharks, Joe Thornton, and that ridiculous play with Ryan Reeves. We talked about the Seattle team and who their rival is going to be, and then we also kind of talked about who the Vegas Golden Knights rival is. Is it the Kings? Is it the Coyotes? Is it the Ducks? Is it the Sharks? We talked about that a little bit. We talked about the Carolina Hurricanes celebrations. If you haven't checked those out, you've got to YouTube them. They're hysterical. I mean, they're a little cocky. They're a little over the top, especially for a team that's not quite locked into the playoffs yet. But they're fun, and we talked about it. And then finally, we talked about Neil and Perron and some of the old Vegas Golden Knights and, and kind of what they've done and how I felt about them and how bounced my thoughts off of Louie. So, so, yeah, that's this week's What the Puck. We're going we're gonna to just play that audio for you, and it's going to hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you guys do, please reach out to me on social media and say, dude, I really like when you interact with people. Last week's episode, for most of you new listeners, is probably the first time you heard my podcast where I had somebody else on with me. I had my wife on to do What's on Tap. 
And I had my daughter on to do random news around the league. Now, my daughter wanted to do it. She did awesome. I'm so proud of her that she did it. Me and the wife, it was funny. We bantered a little bit. It was kind of painful and challenging to actually record. But we had a good time. That's always been my plan with the podcast is to eventually get guest hosts. I don't want a co-host, but guest hosts or interviews or, you know, phone conversations where I'm going to call someone, we're going to talk. I'm going to get there. You got to realize this is all new to me. This is this is new to me really in the last year, year and a half when I started doing videos on my iPhone and then I kind of learned how to edit. I'm an older dude. I'm almost 40 years old. So this is some of this technology is is a little challenging. Uh, thank God for YouTube because you can go to YouTube and pretty much YouTube anything. If you need to change the brakes in your car, you can go to YouTube. If you want to learn how to record a podcast, you can go to YouTube. So I've done that. And sometimes the challenge is getting the right equipment. And equipment costs money. And when you spend all this effort and time to record these podcasts and research these podcasts, and then you have to spend money to actually be able to record the podcast, and then you have to spend money in order to host your podcast so that people can get your podcast on places like Apple Podcast or Google Play or Spotify. It takes money. It takes time. It takes knowledge. That's why every episode you've listened to has gotten progressively better. I, my goal is for every episode to be a little bit better than the last one. In particular, this week, episode 37, you're going, well, what are you doing this week, bug eye guy? Well, I got a soundboard app on my phone. And what I did was I uploaded all my interviews and goal audio for this week's show, along with all my bumpers, my Night's Nation intro, and all my intros to my different segments. I got it on my phone, so all I have to do is push a button on my phone, and it'll start playing. And you guys are probably thinking, I thought you were doing that all along. That's like what radio stations do. And I'm going, yeah, no. What I have done for the 36 prior episodes to my podcast is when I'm ready to cut one of those segments, I just stop talking and I let it run for five to seven seconds. And then I start talking again. Once I'm done recording the whole episode, I will then go back and splice in all my external audio. So all my bumpers, all my interviews, all my goal audio, everything that I'm going to add that's not me talking, I have saved in a file. And then once I'm done, I have to go in and edit every single thing. And it, it, it just takes a long time. It adds like twice the amount of time to the podcast. So I figured I'm going to try this app. All right, before I get into the first official segment, some VGK news. Well, most of you guys know by now that the Vegas Golden Knights officially clinched a playoff spot Friday night. We lost to Minnesota. All we needed was one point, and we would have clinched on our own. Unfortunately, we didn't win that game, but the Arizona Coyotes lost in a shootout to the Colorado Avalanche. That loss clinched the playoff spot for the Vegas Golden Knights. We've locked up the third seed in the Pacific. We can't do any better. We can't do any worse. And I'm glad. What was bad about that was the night prior, the, it was either Wednesday or Thursday. I'm not sure on the exact date, and I apologize for that. But the Arizona Coyotes took on the Chicago Blackhawks. And I'm like, I can't believe I have to root for the Chicago Blackhawks because if the Chicago Blackhawks would have won that game, they ended up losing one nothing to Arizona. But if they would have won that game, the Vegas Golden Knights would have clinched before we even took on the Minnesota Wild. Here's what Coach Gerard Gallant had to say. This was actually after the Minnesota game, but I took just a short audio of him talking about He's excited and glad that we actually made the playoffs. Take a quick listen. By clinching a playoff spot tonight, you can just comment on that even though. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm real happy. I might not look it right now, but uh, it's an 82-game schedule, and we try and make the playoffs. That's what the goal is. And we would have loved the one the hockey game tonight. We probably ran out of time a little bit the last six or seven minutes of how we played great. But we made the playoffs tonight, so that should be accomplished. And Coach Galan is correct. The fact that the Vegas Golden Knights in their second season in the NHL are going to the playoffs again is phenomenal. And I'm excited for the playoffs. I think we're going to be fine. But kudos to them actually clinching. And now we can actually maybe rest some players. This segment's probably going to be a little confusing for some of you Vegas Golden Knights fans because you don't understand why we're not playing players or why all of a sudden so many Golden Knights players are hurt or injured. I don't know. Let's dive into the segment that I like to refer to as... up golden knights give me the news doc is he gonna make it all right vegas golden knights fans this week's banged up golden knights injury report brings us max patch who was on the injury report he actually came back 
and played against Minnesota and San Jose. So that was awesome to see Patches come back, especially after that scary hit. We thought maybe he was going to be uh, more injured, and we got the news from Gallant that it was day-to-day. He took a couple games off, and he came back, so that's cool. Pierre-Edouard Belmar and Marc-Andre Fleury are both out. They have not played in a few games. Uh, Marc-Andre Fleury, maybe everyone thought it was just he was off because of the baby, or maybe some people were joking that he had a vasectomy, which I'm pretty sure as a goalie he's not going to do that during the season. Um, but, yeah, Fleury's still out. Brandon Peary, last week I kind of bashed on Brandon Peary being a healthy scratch, and I apologize to Brandon Peary, but uh, my thoughts haven't changed, just you were injured, so that's the reason you weren't playing. So, I mean, we saw Zekov play a game this week, so that's – Brandon Peary is hurt. He's out of the lineup. Uh, he needs to get healthy before the playoffs. We also saw Braden McNabb and Paul Stasny right before the San Jose, right before puck drop. Stasny was a, a game-time decision or last-second scratch. They ended up putting Zekov in instead which jumbled the lines and forced Eakin to move up. Uh, we'll talk about that later in the show. But, yeah, Braden McNabb, Pierre-Edouard Belmar, Marc-Andre Fleury, Max Pacioretty, Brandon Peary, Paul Stasny, uh, and Eric Halla, who's still on the injured reserve. That's an awful lot of regular players. Like, your your guys that if they're healthy, they're playing in the game. I mean, that's that's a lot. And I know a lot of you fans are freaking out, going, man, we're hurt at the right, wrong time of the year. We've, we've lost five games, and what's going on? What are we doing? This is me talking. This is just the bug egg guy's point of view. And I'm saying we're being smart. We're resting, guys. I know if we would have had Flurry and we would have played all these games and there's could a chance that we could have won a couple of them and then we could have been above the Sharks and we could have gotten home ice. Sure. We needed a lot of things to go our way. And San Jose losing seven in a row was definitely what we needed. Unfortunately, as they were losing, we were losing, so we weren't gaining any ground. And now that it's officially the numbers just don't jive, why not give Flurry another day off? Does Flurry need to play tomorrow against Edmonton? Or if you're listening to this tonight against Edmonton, probably not. He definitely needs to play against Arizona or L.A. He's got to get some in-game time before the playoffs start. But he's won three Stanley Cups. He knows how to take care of his body. He knows what he needs to be out there. Sure, we want him to be sharp, and we don't want Subban to be going into the playoffs first round against San Jose with Subban between the pipes. I mean, it's no disrespect to Subs. We're going to talk a lot about Subs in this episode, but Flurry will be back. The team is being smart. Belmar, Belmar is an older dude. Maybe he needs one or two extra games to make sure he's 100% healthy before the playoffs. Brady McNabb, when was the last time you saw him out of the lineup? Maybe he just needed a day off. Or the coaching staff has go, Nabber, we're going to give you a break. We're going to put Holden in tonight. We're going to let you just kind of take a break. There's nothing wrong with that. Once you have locked up a playoff spot, you, the regular season's done. It's over. We can't do any better, can't do any worse. These games are just to get the team ready for the playoffs. Now, we don't want to go into the playoffs. We've already lost five in a row. We don't want to lose eight in a row going into the playoffs. That would be terrible. That's not what we're looking for. Banged up Golden Knights, yes, we have had a lot of people on the quote-unquote injured list. And that's to be expected. At this time of year, in the position the Golden Knights are in, this kind of news, these late-second scratches and stuff, that's to be expected. Now, if this was game one of the playoffs, I don't think, um, well, Fleury would probably play. Belmar would probably play. Peary, I don't know about his injury. I haven't heard much about Peary, so I'm not sure. McNabb would play, and Stasny probably would have played. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. You have to realize what the team is doing and why they are doing it to get a better understanding. You can't just go on social media and go, Subban's terrible. I don't know why they play Subban. Flurry should play every game. Those are the kind of comments that are just uneducated and ill-informed. Those are the kind of comments that irk me, and those are the kind of comments that make us as a fan base look kind of silly. I mean, Marc-Andre Fleury played 59 games this year. 59 games. That's a lot of time. What The difference is, at the beginning of the season, we played him in a lot of back-to-backs and didn't play Sub, and now we're finally playing some Subban at the end of the year to give Flower a break because he's quote-unquote injured, and that's where we're at. People don't understand why Subban lets in some soft goals. He's the backup goalie. I, I don't know what to tell you. I- if he stopped everything and was phenomenal, he would be a starting goalie for some teams. So, I don't know. Recalled players, we didn't call anyone up from AHL. We still have Maxime Legacy on the roster because Flowers has been out. He hasn't gotten any ice time, um, but 
Yeah, we haven't recalled anybody, and I don't think we are going to recall anybody come playoff time unless someone else gets injured. But I have a feeling someone might get injured if they do. We have people coming back, so I don't see any roster transactions coming. Some people were talking about Nikita Gusev. Now, he's that Russian player over there in, in, in the KHL that we have the rights to via the John Garrison Tampa Bay trade at the expansion draft. And I would not be surprised if he's on the Vegas Golden Knights next year. I, it, he is eligible. Technically, they could bring him over before the playoffs. But do we want another Russian player that hasn't played on the skinny ice in a while? You want him thrown into the mix? Do we want another Shipashev or Shittashev, as I used to call him? Do we want another one of those situations? No. We bring him in after the season. We get him next year on that one lucrative, cheap-ass contract because he's only allowed to get X amount of money coming from over there. And I think we make that move next year. There's going to be some roster moves next year, folks, for you you hardcore fans that were still pissed off about Perron leaving and Neil leaving. Well, we talk about that in What the Puck, but you're going to be upset because we're probably going to lose a couple players you really like next year, too. It's just it, this is a business, and you have to you have to bring your young guys up eventually. They can't stay down forever. So don't be surprised if you see some roster moves next year. That pretty much wraps up Banged Up Golden Knights, and we talked about recall players. Let's go into the next segment. This segment will be interesting because we're going to talk mostly about the playoffs, but this is the segment I refer to as Random News from Around the League. That's right, folks. Random News from Around the League. So this week we are going to talk about the playoffs, and the Eastern Conference is pretty much locked up. The only teams that are not guaranteed playoff spots, as we're talking about right now, is Pittsburgh, Carolina, Columbus, Montreal. So of those four teams, one of them's going to be odd man out. Pittsburgh right now is currently sitting in third place in the Metro. They've got 95 points. And then the wild card teams are Carolina and Columbus. Carolina with 93, Columbus with 92 points, and Montreal has 92 points as well, but they hold the tiebreaker. Columbus does. I want to see Carolina make it because I love their celebrations. I think the Columbus Blue Jackets have to make it. They made all those trades at the trade deadline with no guarantees. If they somehow, and they're tied right now, they could easily fall out of the playoffs. Their GM could go down as one of the biggest boneheads by this not working. Pittsburgh's probably going to get in. They're probably going to lock up the third. I would like to see Carolina and Montreal just to see Columbus not make it just because I think it'd be funny, but they don't deserve it. If it stayed the way it is right now, if the playoffs started today, it would be Columbus and Carolina in the wild card for the East. Now let's slide over to the Western Conference. The Western Conference is pretty much locked up. You've got the Central Division with Winnipeg, Nashville, and St. Louis, but here's the kicker. Winnipeg and Nashville both have 94 points. St. Louis is only one game behind with 92 points. So there still is potential with four games remaining. Well, actually, I think they have three games remaining. Let's see. Um, nope. So Winnipeg and St. Louis has four games remaining. Nashville has three games remaining. There's a potential that St. Louis could get the number one seed in the Central, and then we would get a matchup between Winnipeg and Nashville in round one. Now, in the Pacific Division, Calgary's locked up. If Calgary beats the Sharks tonight – which for you guys listening to this podcast is last night. If Calgary beat San Jose last night, which is really tonight how I'm recording this, Calgary's locking up the number one seed in the Western Conference. All the playoff rounds are going to be running through Calgary. Uh, Vegas and San Jose, it's looking really, really close to San Jose versus Vegas with um, starting in San Jose for round one. And then the wild card. So the West is a little bit different in the wild card, being that Dallas and Colorado are currently in the final wild card spots. You've got Dallas at 89, and you've got Colorado at 85 points. Now, if you look at the guys behind it, Arizona's at 82, so mathematically they're not eliminated, but they're going to have to win and need some help. And then you've got the Wild at 81 points, and the Blackhawks at 79 points. I guess mathematically they still have a chance, but they need to win out and they need help. Of these teams here, if the playoffs started right now, you would have the Calgary Flames take on the Colorado Avalanche, and the I'm going to just say, as of right now, it's Winnipeg. Winnipeg versus the Dallas Stars. I think Colorado, if Colorado's healthy, could give Calgary a run for their money. Calgary's got issues between the pipes. Goaltending is going to be their issue. Sure, they score a bunch of goals. They're tough and physical. But goaltending might be an issue. And Colorado, if they can get Ranton and Landeskog back and healthy right before the playoffs with McKinnon and the way Philip Grubauer's been playing goal, 
Colorado could surprise some teams. As Vegas, I don't mind playing Dallas or Colorado. I don't want to play Arizona in the playoffs because for whatever reason, I think that would be a tough matchup. I don't want to play the Blues, and I definitely, definitely don't want to play the Minnesota Wild. Minnesota's at 81 points sitting out right now. It looks like they're probably not going to make it, and that's a sigh of relief for Vegas Golden Knights fans because Minnesota owns the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, this year, St. Louis Blues swept the Vegas Golden Knights, so I don't know. That's, that's the news from around the league. That's kind of where we're at playoff-wise. Uh, be on the lookout. The next couple games are going to be exciting. I'm telling you, if you guys are not fans of – if you're just fans of the Vegas Golden Knights and you only watch the Vegas Golden Knights, well, shame on you. You should enjoy some other NHL. And this is the perfect time of year. This time of year is when you see the best hockey. I mean, for us VGK fans, we saw it this week. We had to play Minnesota, who's determined for a playoff spot, fighting for their playoff lives. We had to play Carolina and St. Louis. All three teams we placed, we got the – we faced, but it placed all three of those teams. We got their best because they needed to win those games to have a chance to make the playoff. Vegas, in reality, we needed one point. It sucks we couldn't get it on our own. It sucks that we had to kind of – some people say backed into it. It was a matter of time. You're telling me we weren't going to get well, – we'll, we got one point last night against San Jose. So that was our one point. That was how we got in, but – Technically, we clinched because Arizona lost on Friday. Okay, fine. No big deal. What I'm, I guess what I'm getting at is this time of year, we're, it was just bad luck by the schedulers for Vegas. I mean, they didn't know that Vegas was pretty much going to be locked in and they're going to have to play these teams that are tough, that are fighting for their playoff lives. It makes for good hockey. It makes for some sometimes frustrating hockey from fans of like VGK where we have to see these teams giving 110%, and you guys are wondering, why are we not giving 110%? How come we're not out there killer four-check blazing speed on every play? Some of those is because they're back-to-back -back games and we're a little tired. Some of them is the fact that some of our starters are out hurt. Some of it's the fact that, I don't know, I can't really answer that question other than I would blame it maybe on injuries and a little bit of, I don't want to say like taking their foot off the gas, but they're making sure they're healthy and making sure they're ready for the playoffs. And that's what the organization has to do. That's what, that's what the team has to do. And some, for us fans, sometimes it's painful kind of seeing, you know, these goals coming in from the blue line going, how did that get in? But you just got to look at the big picture. These games, I know every game matters, but these ones kind of don't. I mean, as far as points-wise, they don't matter. Sure, momentum and making sure you're playing the best possible hockey as you can. Heck, two weeks ago, I was all excited. We won 10 of 11. And now I'm doing a podcast where we didn't win a damn game this week. And that's why I'm kind of negative, and it kind of sucks. But I just want to get the point across to you Vegas Golden Knights fans and you hockey fans listening to this podcast. There's a, there's a reason why things are happening the way they are right now. And we just have to accept it. There's no reason to go on social media and post a bunch of negative stuff or a bunch of ill-informed, why is this person not playing or that person not playing. All we need to worry about is April 10th or April 11th, whenever that first game is slated for us in the first round of the playoffs. Okay? All right. That wraps up random news from around the league. And now, like I told you guys at the beginning of the podcast, we are going to start the portion where we talk about last week's games. But I promise you I will try and go as fast as I can so that we don't bring up, like, painful memories of last week's games. This is the segment that I refer to as... And now, BGK Rewind, a review and recap of last week's games. All right, so as I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, we played four games since my last episode. We took on the St. Louis Blues in St. Louis, then we flew to Colorado, we took on the Avalanche. Then we came home for a Friday evening game against the Minnesota Wild and then got on a plane Saturday morning and flew up to San Jose to take on the Sharks. Yep, the Sharks again, our first round matchup. We'll talk more about that soon. Now, the St. Louis Blues. Yep, they officially swept the Vegas Golden Knights this year. Last season, the only team to do it to us was the Minnesota Wild. Well, congratulations, St. Louis Blues. You swept our Vegas Golden Knights this year. We lost three games to you guys. And in this one, it wasn't really close. My big my notes from the Blues game was Bennington was hot. We knew that going in. He's a very good young goalie. Um, Subban, 
Subban gave the haters some ammo in this game for sure. And that's going to be a recurring theme through VGK Rewind in this episode because he let in some questionable stuff. I've got a note in here that says Colin Miller looked lost. Well, if Colin Miller looked lost, that doesn't surprise me because Colin Miller has struggled the back half of the season for sure. Heck, he's been a healthy scratch some games. When he's on the back on the blue line and they pass it back, look, Golden Knights fans, it's very hard for Vegas, especially on the power play for some reason, to get zone entry, to actually get into the offensive zone clean and then set it up. When they finally do get in there and they set it up and they pass it back to the blue line because the blue line's kind of the quarterback of the power play and it constantly jumps over his stick, I'm getting tired of it. He always relies on his skate to try and kick it in. I'm like, dude, use your body. Do whatever you have to do to keep it in the zone. So, yes, my notes in this Blues game, there was a couple times where Miller looked lost. Tuck, Alex Tuck, in this game, Alex Tuck had so many chances, and for whatever reason, the puck would not stay on the shaft of his stick. I posted something about stickum. Do you guys know what stickum is? It's that uh, that goopy substance that you can like put on your hands to like help catch stuff. Like the movie Little Giants, the Little Giants, the guy put the sticky stuff, or the movie The Replacements. If you haven't seen The Replacements, it's uh, that football movie with Keanu Reeves, Shane Falco, and they, I think they're the Washington something. I I forget the name. Washington Generals. I don't remember. But the one one, uh, receiver that had a tough time catching it, he put that stuff on his hands, and then he, like, couldn't pull his hands apart, like, to stick them. That's what I'm talking about. They needed to put some of that stuff on on Tuck's stick blade because for whatever reason, the puck was bouncing off. And he had some great chances and just couldn't keep the puck on his stick for whatever reason. Subban and Marchie, I mean, I don't know. You know what? We only scored one goal. We lost 3-1. to one. We did get a goal from Wild Bill. Why don't we take a quick listen to the audio of that goal? Still with Carlson bearing down on him. Carlson digs it out. Here's Marchie. So on high to Miller. A drive. Save Bennington. Rebound. Score. William Carlson on the rebound on the power play with two seconds left on it to tie the game. Now, the good thing about that goal was it was a power play goal, something that Vegas has struggled on. But to only get one goal and end up losing three to one against the St. Louis Blues is just not good enough. It it wasn't a good enough effort. Subban let in some questionable ones and and. It, it is what it is. That's that's the nature of the beast. That's the Vegas Golden Knights of late. Um, let's see here. I've got notes on here that I oh I got audio. Okay, you guys want let's listen to what Malcolm Subban had to say following the three one loss to the Blues. And as soon as that interview is done, I'm gonna immediately roll into Jonathan Marchessault. Now the cool thing about Marchessault's question here, he's talking like a captain. In my opinion, I know the Vegas Golden Knights haven't actually selected an official C, but the answer that he gave following this 3-1 loss in St. Louis kind of sounded like a captain talking. Here's a few clips from Malcolm Subban and Jonathan Marchessault following the loss to the St. Louis Blues. It was a tough game. You know, they played a you know, good defensive game. They didn't give us much. And, uh, when we did good stuff, they really uh, made saves. So. This time of year, that's the way it gets to be. It's a tight, t- tight check game. There really isn't a lot to uh, have over the yeah, I mean, it's tough, you know, especially, uh, you know, to give up the first goal that I gave up, you know, it's tough in a game like that. Like you said, there's not much, uh, not, not too many chances going both ways. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's costly to be giving up goals in these games. What did you see on that first one? Just when you decided to play behind? I just thought I was going behind. I didn't want to. Uh, I probably should have covered it if I didn't have a play. Um, but just kind of threw a blinder behind it. So. No, I don't think so. I mean, we take a lot of pride in having a lot of depth in that lineup, and that's what we have. And when when that stuff happens, I mean, it's just a good chance for guys to step up, and everybody needs to step up in this situation, and uh, that's not what we did tonight. What do you think helped you guys tonight? Uh, I mean, managing the puck. I mean, we did three 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 mistakes, and they, they ended up the net. So, I mean, it's... It's just the way it went tonight, but I mean, overall, I thought we were playing a decent game and we're cashing on the mistakes. So the Vegas Golden Knights leave St. Louis and head to Colorado to take on the Colorado Avalanche. This is another team that, yep, fighting for a playoff spot. We're going to get 110% effort, and that's exactly what happened. Now, right off the bat, we had to play Philip Grubauer. Now, Philip Grubauer 
A lot of people thought prior to the expansion draft that the Vegas Golden Knights might select him from the Washington Capitals. Uh, We ended up taking Nate Schmidt, which probably worked out best for the team. But yeah, Grubauer got picked up in the offseason last year by the Colorado Avalanche. They have Sergei Varlamov as their starting goalie, but Grubauer has been playing really good of late and has surplanted Varlamov. So we had to go to Colorado. They're fighting for a playoff spot. We got to go up against Grubauer. And of course, Malcolm Subban. Welcome, Malcolm Subban. He let in two terrible goals. Two goals were definitely screens. Now, I know us Vegas Golden Knights fans, you guys might not understand that, but if Subban doesn't have a chance to see the puck, he cannot stop it. If you have someone sitting in front of him blocking his view and they shoot it and it gets by him, it's not his fault. Two goals in this Colorado game were not Subban's fault. It was the defenseman's fault for not clearing the way in front of Subban to give him a chance to see the puck. Now, the other two goals, that's bullshit. Subban letting stuff in from the damn blue line. It's like, dude, you got to be able to track the puck. There was one. You guys know what I'm talking about. He's literally standing there. The puck goes by him, and then he reacts, and then he moves. And I know he was not screened on that shot. He just didn't track the puck. That happens. That happens with a backup goalie that doesn't play a lot. Now, in Subban's case, he's played a lot in the last couple weeks. He should be better at that. And you guys also notice Subban, if he lets in a couple soft garbage goals early on, he tends to recover pretty well. In this game, he didn't really recover well. He let in some bad goals later on in the game. And honestly, the Golden Knights in this game were not doing anything. They were not killer forecheck, not blazing speed. It's almost like they were nonchalantly playing the game out there. And then then they needed a spark. And normally a spark is going to come from somebody like Ryan Reeves or William Carey, either a big hit or a fight. You know, there hasn't been a lot of fighting in the NHL of late because, honestly, there's not that many enforcers. The, you need a guy that's highly skilled and fast, and, and you can't put someone, no disrespect to Ryan Reeves, but Ryan Reeves, if he's tired, he leaves the ice. Sometimes that's a liability. Sure, in a situation where you need to get momentum and you need to change things up, a big hit or a fight is going to do that. Well, in this game, it technically wasn't a fight because he only got a two minutes and two minutes, so a four-minute penalty, but... Jonathan Marchessault, yes, the little engine that could. He was like, no, I'm done, dude. And there was a play in the corner where a Colorado guy, and I forget his name. I I apologize for not having his name here. But kind of was messing with Marchie, and Marchie was done, dude. He kind of got him. They both dropped their gloves. Marchie literally picked him up from the ice. And go to VGK Bug Eye Guy on Facebook. I got the video on there. I, I copied it, and I edited it. Marchie. We have to be from Vegas because he did a straight-up MMA UFC-style move where he comes in and he hits him with his forearm to elbow right upside this dude's face. Like, clear as day, great contact, and boom. Now, he got two minutes roughing and two minutes cross-checking or high-sticking or whatever it was. Honestly, it was two minutes well worth it, and that did help. That shifted momentum. The Vegas Golden Knights were down 3-0. It ends up being 3-2. And we had a chance. We had a chance to win this game. I mean, <sighs> we ended up losing 4-3. to three. We did get a goal from Paul Stasny, Riley Smith, and Alex Tuck. And it was cool because Alex Tuck's dad was there. They kept showing him on TV, going back to Mr. Tuck. Here's the audio from Paul Stasny, Riley Smith, and Alex Tuck's goals against the Colorado Avalanche. Right up the other side, rebound, score! in by Paul Stasny, and Vegas is on the board. Three to one. And back to Marcia. So Marcia so it's room. Sends it across. And Colin Miller fan on that. Oh, that was a weird thing that just happened. Marcia shoots. Pass it. Rebound. Score. Riley spins to the side of the goal. And Vegas is back within one. Oh, banks it back. Here's Stone Long. Shot. Stassi. Bad set. Up, saved by Grubauer. They score. Down at home by Alex Tuck. Now, this is one of those games where we pulled the goalie right at the end. We were down a goal, and honestly, I don't know how it didn't go in. Marchie literally had an empty net shooting with four seconds, and it just went slightly wide right, ended up costing us the game. Now, if we would have, if Marchie would have scored that goal, that would have put it 4 4 going into overtime. That would have given us the one point to secure the playoffs. 
but it didn't happen. And Marchie was kicking himself. And honestly, he got into that little scrum, and he was single-handedly the reason that the momentum shifted in that game. And yes, we lost four to three, but we were losing three to nothing. So I'm, I'm glad that the Vegas Golden Knights stuck with it and fought hard and gave it a shot. If you're going to lose a game, that's the kind of game you want to lose. At least you gave 110% effort at the end and you had your chances. You just didn't have the puck luck. It's okay. You're not going to have the puck luck in every game. Here is what Alex Tuck had to say following the tough loss to the Colorado Avalanche. It seems that you guys have not been ready to go right at the start. <clears throat> just two lax of days ago. I think um, we got to come in here. We got to recognize that uh, these teams are playing desperate, but we got to play desperate too. I mean, we haven't clenched. Nothing's, nothing's going to be given to us. Um, I mean, there's still stuff that we can do. It's not like it's, we're sealed up or anything like that. So we got to continue to push forward, and we got to be better. And we can, we're not going to do anything in the playoffs if we're playing like this. So uh, we have to step it up. I think all 20 guys, and I know we're missing a couple of guys, Petri, Peary, guys like that. Um, but we got to be better offensively, too. The last couple of games, we haven't helped Subi out at all. You do make a big push in the second. What was the difference? Uh, I think it was towards the end of the second, actually. I still think at times we kind of a little last days of call myself on the face off there. A little miscommunication between me and Nosy going out there, but um, I got to be better help, helping Subban out there. And um, honestly, I think, I mean, Marshy had a, gave us a little bit of energy there, and that was, a, I think, a, a part of the turning point. Wasn't a big enough turn, a turning point, I guess, because we weren't able to get the win. But, you know, I thought our team definitely played, be played better, and I guess we could take a little bit away from this, and it's a big learning game, too. 20 goals for you, that's a pretty good personal mark. Yeah, that's nice. Win would have been better. So the Vegas Golden Knights end up losing to the Colorado Avalanche 4-3. to They lost to Detroit at home. Then they lost to St. Louis. Now they lost to Colorado. That's three in a row. But now the Vegas Golden Knights get to come home. They get to come back to the fortress. They get to come back in front of their fans, their house, to take on the Minnesota Wild. The problem is the Minnesota Wild also own the Vegas Golden Knights. For whatever reason, they match up really well against us. They, they lock down the neutral zone. They lock down zone entries. And for whatever reason, we really, really struggle against the Minnesota Wild. Now, Minnesota, this game brought the return of Brad Hunt. For you guys that don't know, and you guys all should know, Brad Hunt was traded to the Minnesota Wild earlier this season because he was honestly not getting any ice time with the Vegas Golden Knights. He was the sixth or he was the seventh or eighth defenseman on the team. So he he got the opportunity to go to another team. Um, the Vegas Golden Knights did a welcome back up on the Nitron. People stood up. I stood up and chanted and cheered for him. I mean, kudos, congratulations, Brad Hunt. He honestly, he he's getting to play. And in a contract year, that's very important. So it would have been great to still have Brad Hunt on our team because he's an awesome dude and a good player, but I understand why he left. Uh, Malcolm Subban. Malcolm Subban, once again, now this is going to be a recurring theme, and I'm sorry if you don't like it, but he let in quite possibly one of the worst goals I've ever seen. It was literally behind the line on the backside of the goal, a terrible angle, like he wasn't even ready. In fact, take a quick listen. This was from the broadcasters on TV following this debacle of a goal let in by Malcolm Subban. He'll gain the zone and drive wide on Braden McNabb. Put it on net and he scores from a sharp angle. He beat Malcolm Suman along the short side. And the Wild with the lead just 2 12 into the game. That's one Malcolm Suman certainly like back. That's from behind the goal line. As Patter lets that go, goes off the right pad between the legs of Suban and the Minnesota Wild are up 1 0. So when you're not even three minutes into the game and you're already down one to nothing, you got a problem. And uh, that's been the recurring theme. And in this game, not soon after that, the Vegas Golden Knights ended up being down three to nothing against the Minnesota Wild. At home, in front of our fans, our house, with the chance to clinch the playoffs at home, and we're down three nothing. Now, Malcolm Subban did end up having a 9.06 save percentage. He did save uh, 29 shots on 32 shot attempts. But we went up against Dubnik, who saved 35 of 37 for a 9.46 save percentage. I mean, when you give up a goal 212 into the game, and then you give up a goal 1938, it's a power play goal, but they scored literally right before the period ended. And Vegas Golden Knights were down 2 nothing in the first. 
They were down 3 nothing after another power play goal with Kevin Fiala, who used to be a predator. And then Paul Stasny, the Vegas Golden Knights, was able to actually get a goal assisted by Theodore and Mark Stone at 18 minutes in the second period. And then Paul Stasny got another goal assisted by Patch Reddy and Colin Miller at 8.52 in the third period. Unfortunately, that was not enough. The Vegas Golden Knights ended up losing to the Minnesota Wild 3-2. to two. But Paul Stasny had two goals. Why don't we take a quick listen to the audio of both those goals, and then we'll talk about it on the backside. And up the boards. Theodore reaching to keep it in with a glove. Pacioretty has a jump away from him, but a second effort keeps it alive to Stasny. Pacioretty across for Stone. Power plays over. Theodore drives saved on the rebound score. Paul Stasny just as the power play came to an end. They get the Golden Knights on the board. Well, this unit, real good movement, a different look with Stone and Patch ready on the side. Looking back door, Zucker got a piece of it, centering, Patch score! Stastny from Patch Reddy! Paul Stastny second of the game, the Golden Knights are within one. Paul Stastny ended up getting two goals. His linemate, Mark Stone, had a phenomenal wraparound, and for how, I don't know how it happened, but Dubnik, Flung himself around and sprawled out and got his arm and his glove. And the puck did go across the line, but it did not completely go across the line. And that's the rule. You got to completely go. It was a phenomenal save by Dubnik. And there was a couple shots in this game that honestly post for both teams. But there was a couple plays that the Vegas Golden Knights, they could have won this game. A little bit of puck luck. Um uh, a little bit more tenacity and a little bit more fight and drive at the beginning of the game. But again, I get it. When two minutes into the game, your goalie lets in the most garbage goal I've seen in a while, you're already a little deflated. You're like, dude, we've been playing from behind for games now, and it's getting old. It's getting tired. Well, we, we know it's not Marc-Andre Fleury in there. The team knows that. But they still have to go out there and battle. And in this game, again, it seems like they were deflated early because of a garbage goal, and then they slowly got their legs back and their momentum and, and started to move forward. There was a lot of Minnesota fans at the game. There was a lot of green. It was a Friday in Las Vegas. The weather was nice outside. I get it. I know people still get mad that people sell tickets. I'm not even going to discuss it. You know what? I got post-game interview following the tough 4-3 to three loss to the Minnesota Wild. I'm sorry, guys. We did not lose 4-3. to three. We lost 3-2. to two. We only had two goals by Paul Stasny. Uh, sorry, guys. Here's the post-game interviews from Mark Stone, and then I got Colin Miller. And I know some of you guys are going, why do you got Colin Miller on there, bug eye guy? I'm like, because every once in a while, Colin Miller's going to get on the podcast. So here's the interview from Mark Stone, immediately followed by Colin Miller's thoughts following the tough 3-2 loss at home in our fortress against the Minnesota Wild. You don't have it, but you have to be prepared uh, when you don't have it to, uh, to keep it simple and make the right play at the right time. Um, you know, it's just the way this league is, is there's not a ton of parity in it. Um, every team is good. Every team wants to win. So um, we got to get a, get back to that desperate hockey that uh, uh, we had, um, you know, when teams were closer to us. Coming out of lead for three games, how hard is it to play to chase like that all the time? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you feel like, uh, you're expending uh, maybe a little bit too much energy when you're chasing the game. Um, the start's got to be better for us, ultimately. Um, there's spurts of the games where we're dominating the game, um, but you can't can't spot your te- uh, the other team two goals to start. Here's what Colin Miller had to say. Well, it's a loss, but you do clinch. Um, uh, yeah, that's great, obviously. Um, great to be back in the postseason, but I think if you look at it, you want to be playing your best hockey going to the playoffs. and. Um, has been going our best lately, so we got to pick it up here. We got you know four games left. We better better tighten it up. What, does, what don't you like about your team's game right now? Well, tonight was a slow start. Obviously, I think um, I think that you know really crumbled us. I thought you know third period was good, um, especially against a team like that. They, they clog the neutral zone so well, and they, they make it hard to to really get much offensive going. So when you're chasing it, it's uh, it's a tough game against. All right, so the final game to cover in this week's episode is unfortunately the San Jose Sharks. Now, last week's episode, I had my daughter Hannah join me to do the random news from around the league, and she's walked in here real quick. Hello, Hannah. Hello. 
And uh, yeah, so I'm in the middle of the podcast right now. And the last section that I need to talk about in VGK Rewind is the game from last night. Now, we took on the stupid San Jose Sharks. And unfortunately, we lost in overtime. Now, there was, I talked about it earlier in my podcast before you came in here, but there was some shenanigans that went down with Joe Thornton and uh, Ryan Reeves and Carrier. And there was kind of a whole mixture. And the fact that Joe Thornton was taking the shaft of his stick and jamming it almost into Ryan Reeves' neck three times. Now, what's the reason you actually came in here for? I came in here because I saw a Instagram post that you posted about Ryan Reeves getting fined $2,500 and then Joe Thornton getting fined $225. Yeah, they both got fined $2,500 for the incident. And Ryan Reeves got a 10-minute misconduct penalty on that, which I don't understand. Unless if he said something... I don't get it. I don't understand. I posted that because I was like, I thought there would be some discipline from the NHL today, but I had no idea that they were going to give Ryan Reeves the exact same penalty as they gave. Yeah, so a little grandpa shark for Joe Thornton because I know he's my age, but he has a full on beard that's gray. He's Grandpa Shark, so yeah, it sucked. I I don't know. All right, you can just kind of hang out here as I do this podcast. Chime in if you want to. All right. But the San Jose Sharks, they ended up beating the Vegas Golden Knights in overtime because of another questionable penalty at the end of regulation. Colin Miller, terrible. Of course. Yeah, I know. And then it carried over, and unfortunately, four on three in overtime. Brent Burns shot it almost what, like 22 seconds into the game. I've got it right here. Let's see here. Brent, yeah, 22 seconds into overtime. Brent Burns got his 14th goal of the year, assisted by Logan Couture and LeBanc. It was one of those games that, honestly, the Vegas Golden Knights should have won. 100% agree. I mean, they, they, they had it there. Subban only really let in one bad goal. It was the goal right off the faceoff. And the, the cool thing about that goal is – At 11.26, Vlasic shot it, scored his third goal of the year. At 12.04, Shea Theodore, assisted by Bill William Carlson, pretty much did the same play. Exactly. I mean, so that was like, okay, we lost the lead, but okay, we tied it back up, which was cool. That game, that game could have gone any way. How did we watch that game? Um, We pretty much set up this, like, gigantic screen, and we all watched it outside with, like, friends and family. We totally did. We set up, like, a blow-up projector screen, and we hooked up the projector. Unfortunately, we had to watch on the TV for the first period and a little bit of the second period because it wasn't quite dark enough. But once the sun went down, it was awesome. We were watching on a ginormous screen. We were being a little loud, probably making the neighbors mad. But so what? The game got over at 8-something on a Saturday night in Las Vegas. I don't want to hear it. It was cool, though, right? Yeah, it was cool. And what were you guys doing before the game? Swimming? Yes. Folks, we were swimming in our pool in March. Some of you guys, some of you fans that are listening right now, maybe in Sweden or Canada or Minnesota, or I even got a guy that listens in Australia. Shout out to the dude from Australia. I don't have your name right in front of me, but I'll give you a shout out in future episodes. Um, Yeah, we're swimming in March, so... (laughs) All right, what else do I have on my notes? Because this podcast is going way too long, Hannah, and the the Knights Nation fans, they don't want long podcasts. So terrible official officiating. Reeves got the 10-minute. Old man Thornton, fine. We just talked about that. Back and forth game, we got goals from Cody Eakin, Wild Bill, and Shea Theodore. Now, I love Cody Eakin because I do a little hashtag Eakin face where we do the bah! Here's the quick audio from the goals by Eakin, Wild Bill, and Shea Theodore against the San Jose Sharks last night. Take a quick listen. Puck loose on the boards. Holden pinching in against Nyquist. Carlson with a steal. Across to Smith. Looking. Center to tip wide by Holden. He had cut in from the point. Carlson a drive and he scores. William Carlson set up by Jonathan Marcheseau right in front. And the Golden Knights with the lead, less than four minutes in. Schmidt looking into the middle. Nosek was looking for the tip, but missed it. England out high, wrist shot, tip, save. Jones, rebound, score! Cody Eakin on the backhand, puts it home. His 21st to give the Golden Knights the lead again. Hashtag Eakin face. Here in the third period. Had a lot of energy. Here's Theodore. Let's it rip and he scores. And 
And just like that, the Golden Knights come back to tie the game. Shea Theodore rips it home, and it's 3-3 in the third period. Well, Car so unfortunately, that was the only three goals for our Vegas Golden Knights, and we did end up losing in overtime. This loss, the worst thing about this loss was that locked up the number two seed for the Sharks, which means the Vegas Golden Knights are going to have to go on the road to start out the playoffs, probably in the Shark Tank. Are you nervous? No. You, you excited? Yes. Okay, good. All right, what else do I have on my notes? Let's see. I got interviews. I got post-game interviews from Cody Eakin and Gerard Gallant. Let's first listen to see what old freaking Eakin had to say. Following a good game, could have gone either way, but a tough loss to the Sharks. Looked like one that uh, uh, well, there wasn't much to play for, and this was this looked like a playoff game. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a uh, tone setter. I think both teams wanted to win it, um, pride and rivalry, and um, you know that's the way it's going to be. So it's going to be fun. Are you pretty happy with your game in uh, in terms of uh, you know you're able to generate a lot tonight and you didn't give up too much in terms of opportunity. Yeah, I thought we played like I said a pretty uh, pretty good game. Um, you know, there was lots of lots of stuff going on that uh, we could have strayed away, but uh, we stuck to the game plan for the most part and um, you know, it was hard hitting and you know got pucks in, played simple, um, and responded with a good one in third and. Um, you know, four on three is a tough one at the end, uh, going into overtime, but uh, I could have went either way. Their power play is really good, and it looked like they were trying to kind of goal you guys into some undisciplined play. Will that be a key for you in, if you go to a playoff series with these guys? Yeah, they want to. They want to do that. We'll uh, we'll skate right around them, but uh, you know, they're going to play hard. Um, I think they enjoyed it as much as we did, and um, that's a it's a fun game going into playoffs to be a part of. Now, quickly, before I go to Gerard Gallant's post-game press conference interview, Ryan Reeves was interviewed prior to the Sharks game, and he was pretty much asked, like, what's going to happen? This is going to be a rivalry. This is going to be a first-round matchup. Is there going to be some bad blood? Are we going to start it off now before the playoffs? Here's what Ryan Reeves had to say prior to the San Jose Sharks game last night. Take a listen. Uh they, they message sending games they used to call them and the league's changed quite a bit but uh, what is sort of your outlook going into this game against the team you're going to play in the playoffs i think it's a message game for both teams um, obviously uh, it's looking like we're going to play each other in the first round so um, both teams are going to want to put their best foot forward uh, it's going to be a physical game it's going to be a playoff atmosphere i don't expect anything less from either team your group has talked a lot in the, over the last four games about start not having good starts how do you fix that Oh man, um, you know I think you know it's it's a cliche, but you know, just starting with less skill and more more grind, a little more grit. You know, getting pucks in deep, getting a, getting a bang early, doing whatever you can to get yourself into the game early. I think um, when you try and go and score the first shift, you get in trouble. Does it get old, uh, clinching and having knowing that you're going to be in the in the Stanley Cup playoffs? <laughs> no, never. No, that's what we live for. Uh, no, I think we would rather have done it ourselves. Um, obviously, we're we're happy we're we're there, but um, you know we got to start putting some good hockey on the ice. Otherwise, it's gonna it's gonna be short lived. So, um, you know we we got some games to do that, and uh, today is a a good time to start. All right, and finally, here is what Coach Gerard Gallant had to say following a great game, tough matchup against the Sharks. Here's what Coach Turk had to say. Game to get as hot as it got. Yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you know when you're playing a team that. We're not playing for sure, but there's probably a good chance we're going to play them in the first round. So I thought there was a little chippy, lots of chirping going on both ways. So it's a good game, though. Are you comfortable with uh, your team's discipline? I know, like, tonight this was not a playoff game, but in a playoff game, you, will your guys be able to, to skate away and, uh, and handle that? We've done it for two years, Gary. We've been a disciplined team. We'll play hard. We'll finish checks hard, but uh, we're a disciplined team. Talk about wanting to get a good start. How pleased were you with the first period of it? Yeah, I liked their game tonight. But, you know, it was a good game. It was two good teams playing off, and uh, we had a real good start in the first. You were happy with the way your guys kind of answered and, and didn't? Yeah, stop. definitely. Yeah, no, neither team crossed the line. And like I said, there was lots of yipping going on between the benches and that, but uh, neither team crossed the line. They played hard, and it was there was some, you know, a few big hits both sides. But that's that's hockey, and that's getting ready for the playoffs. So we'll see. I mean, there's still a chance we're not going to play them, but we'll see. No. <laughs> Not that far? No. I always love ending VGK Rewind with a little bit of knowledge from Turk.
I mean, he's kind of a cool coach. What do you think, Hannah? He is a pretty cool coach. He's very knowledgeable. He's a player's coach. He's he's uh he understands because he was a player for so many years and and he just does it the right way. Yeah. And I think the players respond to that. So he he'll get them playing. He'll get them ready to go for the playoffs for sure. All right, that wraps up this week's uh, segment, VGK Rewind. Uh, my final thoughts from this segment is I've been defending Malcolm Subban for a while. Uh, I understand he's a backup goalie, and, and people want to compare him to Marc-Andre Fleury. And, and while Subban is a good goalie and an NHL-caliber goalie, he is no Marc-Andre Fleury. And it's very hard to defend him when he lets in some garbage goals. And there's no, there's no, I mean, when he sh- let that one goal in against Minnesota from like behind the net, Punga, that was crazy, right? It was, it was but like honestly, he, he's trying really hard. I know he's trying really hard. It just seems like sometimes the bad bounces and the bad breaks go against him. They always do, and then everyone blames Malcolm Subban. Everybody blames Subban. It's not fair, right? It's never fair. I agree. You're a goalie. You understand. It's not your fault if you don't. I mean. There's there's so many factors that go into scoring a goal in the NHL. If you lose the face off, and then you turn over the puck, and then you have an odd man rush, or your your defenseman toe picks, or something like that. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can factor in. Now, some of the goals that Subban let in this past week, there's not really an excuse. When you shoot it from the blue line and you're not screened, you should probably track the puck and stop it. Yeah. When they shoot it from behind the goal line and it goes in, you probably should stop it. Yeah. But I'm going to continue to be the power of positivity moving forward um, because we don't have a choice. If Flower is really hurt and is going to miss games, we have Subban. That's all we have. So we don't – I mean, it is what it is. So just jump on the Subban bandwagon for a few more games, Vegas Golden Knights fans. That's all I'm saying. All right, that wraps up VGK Rewind. Now the next segment is going to be slightly modified this week, as I said at the beginning of the show. Take a quick listen to – What's on tap? A ridiculously fast preview of next week's Vegas Golden Knights games. All right, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, what's on tap is where I give you like a quick synopsis of what teams we're playing next week, who we got to look out for, goaltenders, hot players, not hot players. That's not going to happen this week because this podcast is already an hour old and I've still got some more information. The final week of the regular season is bringing our Vegas Golden Knights two home games and one away game. We got Edmonton coming to uh, the Fortress technically tonight or tomorrow, depending on when you listen to this podcast. But Monday night, Edmonton. Then we got Thursday against the Arizona Coyotes. And then we end the regular season on Saturday against the Los Angeles Kings. Are you excited to see the Oilers, the Coyotes, or the Kings, Hannah? Kings. I know. We should probably go to L.A. and watch that game, but it's just logistically it's not going to work out. Um, let's see here. What do I got in my notes here? Vegas needs to be smart and get healthy and make sure we are ready for the playoffs. Now, I'm not going to go into depth on Edmonton other than you got to look out for Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl. I'm not going to go into Arizona because Arizona, we've played really good against Arizona this year. The last couple games have not gone our way, but I'm not afraid of them. We got to just get past Darcy Kemper and we'll be fine against Arizona. And then finally, the last game of the season, This is the last game of the year for the Los Angeles Kings, so you know they're probably going to bring a little bit of extra oomph. I'm sure there'll be some shenanigans with Drew Doughty and maybe Carrier or or one of our Golden Knights players. We just have to be smart. We have to know. We don't want to take any stupid penalties. We don't want to take any suspensions or anything crazy like that. That'll carry over into the playoffs, but it should be fun. Yeah, it should. I'm I'm always excited to watch the Kings. I mean, that is my old team. It was your old team, and you were fans of them for a long time. A so very being, long time. So being excited for it would be really fun. Yeah, I think it'll be fun, and I hope the Vegas Golden Knights beat their butt. I hope they do, too. All right, cool. All right, that's it for What's on Tap this week. We've got Edmonton, we've got Arizona, and we've got the Los Angeles Kings. So, yeah, I'm not going any more further because this podcast is rambling on and on and on, and I apologize, Golden Knights fans. I'm sorry. It's not my fault that we have all this information that needs to be shared. That's what happens when you have four games to cover in VGK Rewind. The last two podcasts, it was two games. This is double the amount of games because if you take two plus two, you don't get five. You get four. Twice as long. (laughs) Your dad's crazy, right? A little bit. It is what it is. 
All right, so we've covered what's on tap. We've covered VGK Rewind. Let's dive right into a little segment that bores the crap out of a bunch of you, but I refer to it as... Get ready for Numbers Don't Lie, the segment of the podcast where your host is about to bore you with player and team stats that you probably won't remember. All right, so my favorite segment to always talk about Numbers Don't Lie is the hits. And right now we got Ryan Reeves, played 77 games, leading the league with 294 hits. Second place is Kraus from Arizona, followed by Tanev in third place in Winnipeg. Kraus has 274, Tanev has 272. But here's the kicker. William Carrier has played 52 games. Now, the other three people in front of him have played 77 games. William Carey has played 52 games, and he's sitting at 268 hits with three games to go. There is potential, and I'm sure Carey is probably going to do it because somebody's going to tell him this stat. He's only six hits behind second place in three games. He averages like eight to 12 hits a game. So I am hoping that after the Los Angeles Kings game next Saturday, when I pull up the final stats for the regular season, a Vegas Golden Knights player will be number one and number two on the hits list for the whole NHL. That'd be pretty cool. Especially the fact that they play on the same line. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. All right, real quick, looking at some other stats for the Vegas Golden Knights. Offensively, we're averaging 3.04 goals a game, which puts us at 13th in the league. Shots on goal, 34.4, puts us at second in the league. Power play, 17.2 for 22nd in the league. That is our Achilles heel. Yeah. We need to get better on the power play. We need to figure it out. We, since Stone has come, they look a lot better on the power play. They still struggle entering the zone, but they can't put the puck behind the net. No. I mean, we did get a couple this week, but not enough to say that we fixed our problem on the power play. Definitely. Shooting percent, we're 8.8 .8 for 22. Face-offs, 50.3. We're tied for 13th in the league. That pretty much means we're 50-50 on the face-off. Yeah. We win half of them. Uh, defensively, stats, 2.76 goals allowed. is 10th in the league. Obviously, those numbers are different when Subban's in, but that's for the whole team, all the goalies that have played. Shots on goal allowed, 29.2, which is 5th in the league, which means we play a pretty tight defensive game, which is good. Penalty kill, we're 14th in the league. We've let in some power play goals of late. That's affected our number a little bit. And then finally, penalty minutes. We're sitting at 7.2 penalty minutes a game. We're fifth in the league, which means we don't take a lot of penalties, but when we do, they're always at the worst time. Yep. Looking at some of the actual player stats, Marc-Andre Fleury, same as last week, sitting at 59 games played. He's got a, a record of 35 wins and 19 losses. Malcolm Subban has now played 19 games. It's crazy. At the beginning of the year, he wasn't playing hardly ever, and now he's been playing a lot. Unfortunately, he's 7-10. and 10. Not that good. Legacy's played one game lost as far as the actual player stats i'm not going to go over everybody like i do every week i just kind of pick out a couple mark stone 32 goals 40 assists 72 points jonathan march assault 24 goals 33 assists 57 points pick a player who do you want to hear merrill i don't have merrill on here because merrill doesn't score enough <laughs> what about pick another player um tuck tuck alex tuck 20 goals finally made 20 goals this season that's really good 31 assists for 51 points, and he's averaging just under 17 minutes of ice time a game, which is pretty good. Why don't we pick Reeves? Because Mom loves Reeves. Yeah. Revo has nine goals, 11 assists, 20 points this year, and he's averaging about just under 11 minutes a game of ice time. So that's it. That's numbers don't lie. I could go into playoffs, but we already talked about playoffs at the beginning. And I can go into the Chicago Wolves, but we're in NHL playoff mode. We don't need to be worried about the Chicago Wolves right now. So that's it. All right, that wraps up this week's Numbers Don't Lie. And as I said at the beginning, and I know I'm repeating myself a lot, folks. I apologize. We're not going to do good, bad, and ugly because I don't want to be negative. And we're not going to do uh, funny shit fans say because I don't want to be negative. All right, Vegas Gold Knights fans, I'm almost ready for the what the puck portion of the podcast. But before we get to what the puck, there's just two topics we have left to talk about. Playoff schedule and playoff ticket policy. So right off the bat, the playoffs for round one are going to start probably on the 10th or 11th of April. Now, they haven't released the actual dates yet, but the problem for us, Hannah, is we're probably going to be out of town because that's spring break for the first couple games of the playoffs. That's killing me inside that I have to miss these games, but we already have a vacation booked and we're going to honor our, our vacation 
It's going to suck. I'm going to be very upset. I'm going to be angry dad, but it is what it is. We're going to probably miss the first couple games. Eh. Nothing we can do about it, right? No. All right. So a- as I find out more about the schedule, I'm sure you guys will see it online, but just go to VGK Bug Eye Guy on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. There's probably a good chance I will post something about the schedule. Or I'll definitely retweet some things that, that references the schedule for the Golden Knights so you guys can listen and you guys can know when the games are. The other thing I wanted to quickly talk about was tickets. So once we were officially clinched, um, I got an email as a season ticket holder saying, hey, we're gonna, you're already automatically signed up for the Knights Val because your account's in good standing. And the cool thing about it is for us season ticket holders is they, they make us pay after the round's over which is kind of neat. I mean, they, they say uh, they'll, they'll just send us a bill. I mean, they have our credit card on file, so they're going to charge it regardless. But once the round is over, they'll just say, hey, this is how much it was, and they'll charge the account. We probably won't know the prices until tomorrow. Uh, rumor is that April 1st they're going to be releasing. That'll be tomorrow. That'll be podcast Monday, but I'm recording this Sunday. So I don't know how much the tickets are going to be. I would imagine it's going to be pretty similar to what happened last year. And as a season ticket holder, I was okay with that because I thought the prices were relatively fair. They were. I mean, well, you don't have to pay. You, you got a job. You going to pay for the tickets? <laughs> they, were, they were reasonable. Now, secondary market, that's another thing. I believe the Golden Knights are going to have uh, tickets to the general public available on Friday, which is the 5th or the 6th of April. And those are going to be tickets that if you buy them, you can't transfer them and you can't sell them. Now, me as a season ticket holder, I take the Knights vow, which means you will not see my tickets listed on any ticket exchange or flash sheets or anything like that. I still have the ability to transfer tickets. Don't get me wrong. If I can't go to a game, the their seats will not be empty, but I can transfer tickets to friends or family, or I guess technically you could sell tickets to somebody like a coworker and then just transfer the tickets. But either way, be on the lookout this week. This week, Monday, they're probably going to release all the prices and then go on flash sheets, and you're going to see right off the bat how much tickets are going for. You got to realize the secondary market is a little extreme. You don't, I, they, if I buy my ticket, I'm just going to use an example. Say my face value is a hundred bucks. There's nothing that says I can't sell my tickets for two hundred dollars. I know that makes a lot of people mad. A lot of people get upset because they don't have the ability to buy a cheap ticket. I get it, but that ain't my problem. I. I pay a lot of money for regular season tickets. Playoffs is a whole different animal. It's why I sold the Detroit game. It's why I sold the Edmonton game. By selling those two games, that's given me some money to now cover the first round and maybe the second round of the playoffs if we make it. So be on the lookout this week. That's That information is going to get released. And we're going to know really after maybe Monday, definitely Thursday, we're going to know who we're playing and when we're playing. That information is going to get out there. Once the final couple teams secure the final playoff spots, the NHL gurus up in Toronto are going to do their magic and they're going to start firing out schedules. They're going to check with the arenas, make sure everything's good, and then we're going to know. So just be on the lookout for that. All right, I covered playoff ticket policy and I covered playoff schedule. That's it. This podcast, you're pretty much done with me with the exception of one thing. As I told you guys earlier, I did that live stream with Louie from VGK Coverage. Well, in this week's What the Puck, I have just taken a little bit a couple snidbits from different segments of that almost two hour live stream and provided it here for you in the what the puck you guys are going well what are we going to talk about bug eye guy well we're going to talk about vander kane the sharks and the joe thornton situation we're going to talk about the seattle expansion team because while we were doing the live stream some people were having questions about seattle and then they were talking about rivalry like are we going to be expansion expansion a rival with seattle and Louie and I both agreed that it's probably going to be Vancouver versus Seattle because they're neighbors pretty much. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some of the who I think our biggest rival is and who Louie thinks is. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes and their, their, and their ridiculous over-the-top celebrations. We talk about that. And then finally, towards the end, we kind of go back and forth on the James Neal, the David Perron situation since they left us and and Louie's a big Perron fan. I was not the biggest Perron fan, but we have a little banter back and forth. So sit back. It's about, I don't know, like 15 minutes. I got about 15 minutes of audio here for you guys to kind of listen to me and Louie from the live stream last night talking Vegas Golden Knights. And again, to remind you, if you want to listen to the full, complete stream, it is available at VGK Coverage on YouTube. You can check it out. You can see me, the bug eye guy, sitting with Louie talking Golden Knights.
I hope I've hyped it up enough, and if it's not good, I apologize. But now, get ready for my favorite segment of every episode, the segment that's near and dear to me, the segment I refer to as... What the puck? Seriously, what the puck? Evander Kane? I can't stand Evander Kane. But if he was on my team, you bet I would love all the shenanigans that he's up to. But since he's not, don't like him. So, I mean, I totally I respect your opinion. Absolutely. But where are they going? Did you not watch the same game that we watched? Did you not see Mr. Old Man Joe Thornton? And mm. I guess I can't call him Old Man because that's picking on him. But he, he's got, like, most of his beards gray. Anyways, Joe Thornton, in the little scrum that everybody's going to talk about, takes the butt of his stick not once, not twice. Yeah. But three times three and jams times. it into Revo, sorry, Ryan Reeves' throat. He did that. And, and Reeves isn't classy because he's laughing. Reeves isn't classy because R- Reeves and Kane are going at it on the bench talking smack. And yeah. Kane's getting visibly upset and yeah, Reeves and, and is smiling. I, I would never say that there's definitely like some guys where – they, they draw more attention than others. Ryan Reeves is one of those guys. Vander Kane is one of those guys. It's hard for me to ever say that one player in particular is not classy because if, if you look at it, both teams had their fair share of, of what, what would you call it? Ju- just It went nastiness. back and forth. Yes, just it went back both, and forth. Yeah, both teams had nastiness on both sides, yeah. and that's what made it so fun. That's what made it so enjoyable because both teams were playing nasty. Honestly, I, I wouldn't say either team showed much class because the, both – both teams had players that were doing some unclassy things, and that's what made it so f- fun to watch, I think. It was exciting, and for you Sharks fans, this is the second time you've faced our Vegas Golden Knights coming off a of back-to-back. Now, I know there's no excuses, and a good test will be watching you guys play tomorrow against the Calgary Flames after mm-hmm. going toe-to-toe with Vegas into overtime, yeah. and now you get to play on the back-to-back and see how it feels. Yeah, I mean, it, everything you know goes around, comes around, but, I mean, ultimately, it, what – well, let's just, let's just go through the game real quick, right? Who scored the first goal of the game? That was Wow Bill, the man that pretty much owns Martin Jones. The now, Swedish gunslinger William Carlson, baby. Now, for some of these people, in, oh, some Blackhawks, Nick S. Blackhawks talk. Welcome, welcome. What's going on, Nick? Yeah. Then my buddy chair sit. Positive, positive. You lost against a playoff team. We lost to Florida. You're right. He's a Boston fan. Uh, Hershey Bear, what's going on? Losing the losing streak does continue. I mean, it happens. Um. But anyways, getting back to the game, what we were talking about, Wild Bill. Wild Bill got the first goal of the game. Now, for Sharks fans and for fans in the NHL in general, you got to realize Wild Bill is the kryptonite to Martin Jones. For whatever reason, if you watch, I know Vegas has only been around for a second year, but if you watch all the matchups between the San Jose Sharks and the Vegas Golden Knights, if William Carlson is in the game, there's pretty sure – Pretty pretty positive there's going to be at least a play that makes Jones look silly. Yeah, I mean. And it, Every game. I think it, that, I think we were talking. It, I think it's in Jones's head. Like, yes. the rest of the Sharks, they play pretty decent against us, but it feels like every time we play Jones, he definitely, he makes some silly mistakes, and it, it just, it's a mental thing. And sure enough, William Carlson goes up there, gets the first goal of the game, which we were all counting on. Yes. Um, what happened? Can't believe that. Okay, if you love the the way the playoff system works or if you like it the old way, the fact that you're going to have the two and three seeds from the Central and the Pacific square off in the first round, you're going to have maybe St. Louis versus Nashville, or it could even be Winnipeg versus Nashville in the first round. They're all only a couple points behind. Could you imagine San Jose, Vegas first round, and Winnipeg, Nashville, first round. See, I don't know if it's a mix of of <laughs> the just so many good teams are making the playoffs. Every team's just so good, or is it just that the playoff format is they should change it? I mean, I liked one eight two seven, but then I also like the divisions, making sure division teams go at it right off. The I bat. get it, and and that's how they have it. And I don't think they anticipated that you would have these these crazy matchups of such good, talented teams meeting so early. But it is what it yeah. is. So why don't we get into these comments? I saw a comment earlier from Nick S. Blackhawk Talk. He said it was uh, uh, Scott Foster, the one-year anniversary of Scott Foster. Yeah, I love Scott Foster. I, you know, every time I'm on Facebook and I'm going through my random videos, you know those videos that, that you click on one and then there's a whole bunch attached to it? Yeah. 
Those are great when you're on the the, the toilet. Those are those are good <laughs> toilet videos when you're killing time and you're scrolling through. But every time the Scott Foster video comes on, I always watch it. Always. I always watch it, and especially now that Stasny's on our team because Foster totally robs Paul Stasny of a goal. And I'm going, this is a beer league goalie that came in and Coach Quinville's laughing because this guy's yeah. going to play for the Chicago Blackhawks against the Winnipeg Jets, who ended up going to the Western Conference Finals yeah. last year. And this beer league goalie comes in and gets seven saves, Yo, doesn't let in a goal. It, doesn't it make you, like, when, when our goalies are having a hard night or, like, say we, heaven forbid, you know, say your prayers tonight, knock on wood, but – if all of our goalies go down, doesn't it make you just want to be like, yo, like go get go get Jake from accounting and see what he got, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like let's see what we can do out there. That's awesome. I Scott Foster, that's that's one uh that's one if I get a Blackhawk jersey, I want it to be Scott Foster. That's pretty funny. What's going on, Sir Carnal? If you don't So this is uh Chair City Chair says City. Seattle isn't going to be rivals with Vegas like Gary Bettman wants it. It's going to be Seattle versus Vancouver. It's only an hour drive not including the border for a new game. That is a no-brainer. Of yeah. course Seattle's going to be the rival with Vancouver. They're an hour away. It's not going to be Vegas. Trust me, Vegas has their option of, I would say Arizona, but no, because Arizona's going to be moving to the Central. Yeah. So It'll be easier for me to hope they do, though. Yeah. Like it, the, well, like, uh, during the, like, they're not in the Pacific. I was cheering for them for like, the, the first half. I was like, I hope you guys do good. You know, it's my, my team for like nine years or whatever, ten years. And then... Two like weeks they ago, got, they got too close. I was like, "All right, y'all need to start losing." Two weeks ago, <laughs> they were like four points yeah, behind us. I was us. like, "Y'all need yeah. to start losing now. Y'all need to calm it down. Y'all they are going did. too crazy." They did. Yes, they did. So, he's right about this. It's going to be Vancouver and Seattle, and yeah. Vegas is. I, I swear, it should be L.A. That like that should be our rival, or it maybe even Anaheim. But we own Anaheim. We're like 50-50 with L.A., and there's that dowdy, carry a bad blood. But it's San Jose is I our rival. I think the majority of the people that don't like the Ducks, like you and me, we're the mo- mo- the majority of people don't like the Ducks are because they had they liked hockey previously, and they don't like Kessel, or they don't like, you know, name your guy. Corey, Corey Perry, Getzlov, yeah, just name it, Raquel. Gibson, I mean, Ra- Gibson, Gibson is great, but he pisses me off. Miller. He's just too awesome. Silverberg, they all suck. They're all they're all knuckleheads. Gibson's not that awesome. No. He just, he just plays the really Ducks good. in general, the, the Ducks are just like the Kings. They're yeah. old and slow, and they still play that tough physical game. Yeah. And I'm just not a fan. I don't. I'm not a fan of that style, and I'm not a fan of that organization. It's no no disrespect to them. They're they're good, but not this year. I, I don't like them. And our rival on paper and on matchups has been San Jose. Yeah, it's it been, been the most. Last it's year, been the best matchup. Last, last year it was hard because it was the Kings and San Jose that both, you know. But then but we swept the Kings, and yeah, then it was San like. San Jose kind of, San Jose is a front runner for sure. And San Jose stole one in the playoffs in that overtime game where Marchie's goal didn't count, but the same play happened earlier. But yeah. we match up better with them. They're They're way more entertaining games. And we play them enough that they could be our rival. Yeah, and they probably should be yeah. for a while because the Kings have the Ducks. I wouldn't like. I could see why some people like expansion rivalry or whatever. I think. I don't think it's going to be as 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 good as a rivalry between San Jose, but I, I can definitely see it being like the the rivalry of the expansion teams or whatever, where it's a little bit of a tiff. But I think we're just going to destroy them because I don't think they're going to they're not going to have be as successful as us. Yeah, Let's be not. honest. And and we're gonna be lucky if that San- Seattle team gets seventy points. Yeah, that I that'll so. be a really good year. And that's what we thought we were gonna get I, next. Yo, last I was year. I was ready to embrace the suck, you know. I was well. There's one benefit that if we would have sucked last year, they would not have raised ticket prices like they no. did this year. Yeah, and it's next been nuts. Year. Like th- that Red Wing game. The Red Wing, like no st- no offense to Red Wing fans, but the Red Wings have been trash this year. Absolute trash. I know you guys beat us, blah blah blah. But you guys still been have a, a, an awful year, right? Yeah. We go, we play the Red Wings. I'm waiting for ticket prices to drop like they usually do. They go down to like 80, 70 bucks, maybe b- like right before the game's about to start. It happens. You just gotta wait. You be patient. I did this for the Red Wing game. They went down. Da- they they started going up. And by the time the game was about to start, like the cheapest one I saw was like one sixty, and this is for like one of the higher the higher up seats. And I was like, I'm not paying that; it's ridiculous. What happened? I s- okay, so that Detroit game was the second game of the season that I missed. Yeah. So I missed the Buffalo game at the beginning of the season, 
And I've been to pretty much every other game. Yeah. Now, my daughters, for their lacrosse tournament, they they decided to change the games last minute, and I'm going, well, crap, what am I going to do? I'm not going to miss my kids' games for a hockey game, especially when I've been to so many. So I, talking to the wife, says, hey, we've given tickets away throughout the year. We've done this. I go, why don't we sell these to help get some money to pay for the playoff tickets? Dude, I got just under $200 a ticket. Yeah. For my upper bowl, yeah. Detroit. Yeah, I'm well, going. I, I I'm going. This is a great game, and 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 I sold them a couple of days in advance, and I couldn't believe how much money I got for yeah. them. Uh, well, I asked you. I asked you before. I was like, "Yo, yeah. said, me and my wife want to go to this Detroit game. You got any tickets?" And you're like, "Yo, I sold them for. I don't know if you want to say how much you sold them for, but I, I sold them for X amount." And a I was lot. like, "Gosh, I'd have sold them too." A Shoot. lot. Yeah, it, forget me. In fact, Edmonton comes to town on Monday, and that's the third game I'm going to be missing this year. And I did sell those tickets as well. I did. Mm-hmm. Now, not as much as Detroit, but I still got a pretty penny. And for me, those two games, selling those two games is going to pay for my first round and probably a good portion of my second round if we make it to yeah. the second round. So it's paying for the playoff tickets. Paying for the playoff tickets. There so you go. I, I don't have a problem with that. Now, a lot of people got pissed off, and a lot of people get pissed off every time you watch a game or you're at a game in Vegas. And a good example is Friday. Yeah. A lot of green. There, there was, was a lot of green was, in the fourth. You heard a lot of dude for dudeness. It was and the then battle they were, of the soup and so, dude. So I had, exactly. And I had a guy behind me that was like, you guys stole our chant. And I turned around, and I was like, you said dude. Yeah. I said sued. He goes, yeah, you stole it. I go, the the guy's name's Subban. What? How? Yeah, uh, what do you want? Sir? Your guy's name's Dubnik. You're not gonna say Dubnik. You're gonna yeah. say Dub. Yeah. And our guy's Subban. I'm <laughs> not gonna say Subban. I'm gonna say Sub. So, yeah. <laughs> he was like, like, like you stole it. And I'm like, even if we did steal it, like pound sand, we're new. We're gonna, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> we're not gonna come up with yeah. something brand new. Like technically, like I'm sure we all stole stuff from the original six, anyways. Then, right? Everybody does. Like refuse suck. Everybody yeah. chants refuse you suck. No refuse suck from us. I'm pretty yeah. sure that that everyone does. It. Everyone says or, it. Or here's another one. You know, Nashville is big on when Nashville when they get a goal, they they heckle the crap yeah, out of the other goalie. Yeah. They you know they'll be like, it's all flurry, your fault. flurry, yeah. you yeah. suck. It's all your fault. Yeah, blah, blah. All. Now Vegas, there's a group of people that do the the goalie, 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 you suck. Yeah. Now they don't do the whole other Nashville thing. No. But some fans, when Nashville was here, they were like, oh, you guys stole that. I'm like, no, we didn't steal yeah. that. It Everybody in, does that. We did in, that. It was inspired. Well, when I was a fan of the Las Vegas Wranglers, our, a, our ECHL yeah. team at the time, they used to play at the Orleans Arena. We used to do that to their goalies. Yeah. So don't tell me we stole that. It's just yeah. hockey only has X amount of chance you can do. Yeah. There's only so many things I you mean, can say. Well, plus, I mean, you got that many people, and it's like it's hard to be organized. Like Winnipeg, I give it to Winnipeg, though. Winnipeg's they, they, they somehow, I mean, you come up with like a a, a long paragraph, and th- every fan would be right on beat chanting that thing. Yeah, but they Amazing. live. But they live in Winnipeg. That's true. They probably all know each other. Uh, uh mm. they got, I mean, it is smaller. What is it like? Thirteen. It's Manitoba, dude. It's the small port of Canada. Yeah. It's the. So I they mean, they'll probably like they probably would have meetings every week, and they're like, "What are we going to say this week?" When we play this team, what are we going to I mean, I don't want to talk smack because Ryan Reeves is from oh, Winnipeg. That's not, I'm not talking trash. And I'm just Cody saying Eakin, that it's awesome. Uh, it's, if anything, it's not trash. It's they're like a very, compliment. Like they're very good committed. And organized, and somehow it just it, no. they make it good. Like uh, when uh, when they played the Sharks, right? And I think they stripped Thornton of captaincy, and then they, they were yelling, who's your captain? Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. This, yo, Winnipeg is like they're the best at just talking that trash as like a unit. So really good. I, Nashville I like fans, I can't stand their songs to goalies. I dig it. I think it's funny. Yeah, I think it's funny. And too. I like it that the fact that they're consistent. So See, I'm all about having fun. Yeah. I like fun. Like what the Canes do, a lot of people don't like it. I like it. It's oh. fun. It, what's most important? Do the fans enjoy it? Do they love it? You know, and if they, if they do, then then that's that's you, right for that team. That's right for that building. Are you talking about their their celebrations? Their shenanigans, like when their they, when their, I, their when, wins shenanigans. When I watched them play Duck Duck Goose against us, I hated it. I hated watching it, and I wanted us to beat them in their own house so we could play hide and seek there or something after the game to rub it in their face. They had, but one I will say that I I laughed though later because I think so that's great. So the bowling one with the helmet was hysterical. Yeah. But the most recent one that I saw, and I don't watch all their celebrations. because No, fishing. 
the fit, I didn't see the fish. They had a basketball. dude literally. They had a dude literally on the bench, and they threw like a rope out there, and one of the players like grabbed onto it, and they were pulling him yeah. on the bench <laughs> like they caught this fish, and then they flop him over the bench. It was hysterical. Oh, Did they beat the sharks? I don't know who they played. Oh, that they game. better beat the sharks, and that would be. I'm gonna have funnier. to look into it, but maybe Vancouver too, right? Because they got the orca on them. Their their celebrations are. They're funny. Some of them were good. Now they're over the top. They've been getting better. Like we, I think we were one of the first when they started Duck Duck Goose. Yeah. And I was like, eh, it's just a game, but you know, okay. But now, I mean, they've been really. I mean, props. Like I'd give them a ten because they're getting more creative with it. And that's what's most important. Well, and the fans are loving it. The fishing one, the bowling one, they're they're fun. They did the basketball one, which was fun. I don't know if you saw that one. Dunked I'm it. I, I'm waiting till the end of the season when one of the Carolina Hurricane fans is going to put a montage of all their celebrations yeah. together, and then they'll post it on YouTube, and I can watch them all at once. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Whoever is a Carolina Hurricanes fan, make well, one of those that. videos. My, my, my buddy Courtney, uh, Jens95, she's got like 7,000 subscribers, maybe more now. She does highlights and all that stuff. She needs to make a now. video of all oh, the yeah, celebrations at Carolina. Gonna, I'll, pro- I'll probably text her and tell her, yo, you got to make, you got to do that. Or my other buddy, Alyssa Hope, she does all that kind of stuff too. That's a good idea. I think that, that would be funny, idea. and you'd get a lot of views on that. Yeah. Especially because um, a lot of hockey fans don't, they don't, they don't follow Col- Carolina like Vegas Golden Knights fans. Yeah. None of our guys probably even know. A lot of our fans probably don't even know that's going on. I mean, they. I think they. They at least know they that do. they did Duck Duck Goose against us. If you watch NHL Network or if you watch ES- ESPN, yeah. doesn't get much coverage. But, try, but NHL try, Network. Honestly, me, I try to stay off all that stuff because then I want my opinions to be my opinions. You know, I just like I look at the news, but I don't listen to other people's opinions on what they're doing. See, I love listening to the pundits on NHL Network, but they really irk me. They, I know you because they're so biased. You know, like, like they're biased. Like. Uh, you're a little bit sensitive to some things. Yeah, if you talk crap about John Merrill, I'm like very sensitive. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, like last year you weren't. Last year you're right on board. So last year I was definitely anti Merrill and I was anti Brandon Leipzig. I mean anti Spisa. Spisa too, but yeah, but Leipzig was like really bad. I was yeah. like, this guy's terrible. How is he in the NHL? Talk about lipstick? Yeah, lipstick. Brandon lipstick. No good. And he's bounced around a couple yeah. teams this it year. Was he's Vancouver Kings, right? Yeah, he's then, terrible. Yeah. And then Merrill, who else was bad? Perron. Perron. Perron was my big battle I with you because you liked Perron. I told you, you, you can't bounce him off the puck. He, he just, he's good He's good at protecting the puck. But Perron. He so many plays alive. Perron's puck hogged, and Perron doesn't really play defense. Well, I, you know why he hogged it? Because he had James Neal on the same line. And James, James Neal plays zero defense, yeah. and James Neal is. He's kind of like Ovechkin, but Ovechkin can hit. Yeah. Ovechkin can play physical. I guess what and I'm comparing to is, is James Neal like wants to be Ovi and just sit there and just but wait just for someone to pass him the puck to shoot it in. Yeah. That's what he wants. He just he plays the same game, but he just never gets to shoot it because no one. <laughs> yeah, because he's not physical. Know. He's we. I don't want to bet. Uh, we've been going I, on forever, but James well, I Neal. I can't believe you just compared James Ovi to James yeah, Neal. Yeah, I can't believe that yeah. just happened. You guys are going. This guy's it's an idiot. A live stream. He I don't know how to edit that out. He says he says James Neal's better than Ben Ovi. No, I'm saying they uh, they they're both snipers, but Ovi has a complete game. And James Neal, Vegas Golden Knights fans, if you're listening to this right now, and you've been watching this for 80 minutes or whatever, it's bless been your hearts. For thank you. Um, I know some of you guys have a tender spot in your heart for James Neal. You love James Neal because. He was the expansion team. He was the face of the franchise. When they started selling jerseys, all they had was Flurry jerseys and James Neal jerseys. That's it. That's all that was out for a long time. What's Neal done in Calgary? Uh, Besides steal money from them. Steal money from them on that that contract. I remember me and you talked about that, and I made videos like, would I I want them to sign James Neal? I was like, yeah, I wouldn't mind it, you know. But I, I remember I said, like, for two or three years, yeah. Anything longer than that because he's on the decline. His numbers show that he's been on the decline. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't want to sign him for more than two or three. No. And I and so they they give him that that kind of money. Neil's for an alcoholic. For <laughs> <laughs> give give him that kind of money for five years. And I was like, well, I mean, it might benefit the first two years, and I guarantee you, by you know year four and five, is you know you just you waste the money on a guy who might not even. You might not even want to be in the lineup, and that happened a lot sooner than we thought because it's happened in the very <laughs> year they got them, and they still got how many years left? Four years, I think they signed yeah. him five years. Ridiculous like, money. Cl- close to six now, or five, five or six. I think it was, uh, close it was to six. just it was close to six. Yeah, and and 
we talked about this earlier. They're going to buy him out. He's going to end up getting paid good money for sitting at home because there's yeah. no way they're going to pay that money lo- for the whole five I years of the I contract. Mean, it, it's not <laughs> – uh, Cody B. Cody B. Too cool says. All right, Vegas Golden Knights fans. I hope you enjoyed listening to me and Louie go back and forth. And again, as a reminder, if you want to listen to the complete live stream, it's available at VGK Coverage on YouTube. You can go check it out, and you can see me and Louie go back and forth talking about all things Vegas Golden Knights. A lot of it was answering uh, chat messages from the live stream, but hey, if you're interested, check it out. All right, Hannah. I know you joined me kind of late on the podcast. Uh, you excited for this week? Yep. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. I'm ready for the regular season to be over. I'm ready for the playoffs to start. I love playoff hockey. There's nothing better than playoff hockey to watch on TV. And, yeah. So, folks, thanks so much for tuning into Episode 37 of Knights Nation Podcast. Remember, contest this week for a chance to win a beanie and some stickers. The magic word is garbage goals. So garbage goals, you got to send an email to vgkbugeyeguy at gmail.com. Make sure you put contest number three in the title. Down in the description, you got to type in the word garbage goals, and you also have to let me know where you're subscribed to the podcast. If you're on Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, doesn't matter. Just make sure you let me know that you're subscribed to the podcast somewhere. All right, that's it. I've talked way too much. I'm sorry this podcast is just over an hour and a half. It's kind of long. Unfortunately, when you have twice as many VGK Rewind games to cover, it is what it is. And when I add like 15 minutes of me and Louie going back and forth in the What the Puck segment, I apologize. Thanks. Thanks again for listening. I really do appreciate it. I'm super excited for what's to come for the Vegas Golden Knights. I know this last week was kind of painful with all the losses, but fear not, Vegas Golden Knights fans. I'm pretty sure Coach Turk and GM GM George McPhee have a plan. I'm pretty sure they do. And Flurry will be back. Belmar will be back. Stasny will be back. Uh, the only one that I'm not sold on is Eric Halla. Eric Halla would be cool, but there's no need to rush him back. It was an ugly injury. He's been recovering. If he comes back, great. If not, I think the Vegas Golden Knights, with the healthy group that they have, could hopefully make a deep run in the playoffs. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, thanks again so much for listening. The Vegas Golden Knights hockey gods have given me another opportunity. So next week, episode 38 will be recorded on Sunday and will be available Sunday night or Monday morning. Not sure. All right. That's it. I'm done. Thank you, Hannah, for coming in and joining me on the podcast. Kind of cool. And I guess I'm going to end the podcast the way I always do, but I kind of want to give you a shot to do it first and just kind of see. Can you can you do my catchphrase towards the end? No, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Come on. You got to do it. We're on the podcast. I don't care. I love you. And as always, Q Nights Q. <laughs> See, I got her to do it. All right, folks. Thanks again so much for tuning in. I love you. And as always, duh, bug eye guy. Go Nights Go. You've been listening to the Nights Nation podcast. For a full recap of this podcast or to listen to past episodes, visit KnightsNation.Vegas. Your host, the VGK Bug Eye Guy, is available on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at VGK Bug Eye Guy and at KnightsNationLV.